Good evening. I'd like to call to order this regularly scheduled meeting of the City Council for the City of Calistoga. Today is Tuesday, May 7th, 2019. It is 6.03 p.m. City Clerk, has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Thank you. Can we have a roll call, please? Of course. Council Member Krause? Here. Council Member Lopez Ortega? Absent. Council Member Williams? Present. Vice Mayor Dunsford? Here. And Mayor Canning? Here. Um, if you haven't already done so, please silence your cell phones for us. Thank you. And if you all please stand, remove your caps, and enjoy first salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back. Happy May. This is our first meeting for the month of May 2019. Uh, we will start with oral communication on consent items or non-agendized items. This time is set aside to re co receive comments from the public regarding matters on the consent calendar or matters of municipal concern that are not on the agenda. This is pursuant to Government Code Section 54954.3, also known as the Brown Act. However, the Council cannot consider any issues or take action on any request during this comment period. Speakers are encouraged to limit their comments to a maximum of three minutes so that all speakers have an opportunity to address the City Council. Um, I do have some speaker cards, so I'll start with those. Um, if anyone who's handed a speaker card has uh, filled one out to speak on presentation item, item number six, we can leave time for comments at that period. Um, otherwise, I will go here. And the first speaker. Uh, item number, so the first person I have is Sheila Allen. Well, you know, I'm just glad you reserved your comments, but can I still speak for the comments? You, you, can do your, you can do your three minutes now, or you can hold your three minutes until you receive the, if it's specific to the foothold matter, yeah. I would recommend waiting then. You'll still get three minutes either way. Okay. All right, so we'll put you as number six. All right, uh, next I have Lisa Marie Gift. Should you so choose, but no, you're not required, please share with us your name and your address. Yeah, definitely. So um, I have a little something prepared, and I think that I sent a report to all the city council members a few weeks ago in regards to the vacancy tax. So my name is Lisa Marie Gift, and I live at 1712 North Oak. And I've been a resident of the city for about eight years. Um, and I'm a small business owner and a resident of this town. I'm speaking today in regards to the number of vacant storefronts in our city. I, along with many other residents, think it's time for our city to seriously examine the reason for the consistently high number of storefront vacancies on Lincoln Avenue. This has been a long, an ongoing issue for as long as I've been here. And as we all know, it is a very complicated topic, but it is a topic that should no longer be ignored and one that I hoped would have been addressed at the general plan meeting or in the upcoming general plan. It is no surprise that online retailers have made it hard for brick and mortar. And we have seen a number of business shutter this year um, for various reasons. Ultimately, however, the consequences are harmful. We need thriving shops and restaurants to give heart to our city. This situation is not unique to Calistoga, as it is playing out in small towns across America. But unlike other small towns, we are located in one of the most unique and beautiful places in the country. It is time that we look to our counterparts and see what is working and what is not. There are many cities using the controversial, what I've been told in this town is controversial, vacancy taxes to fight Main Street blight. And I believe this is a tactic which with the right planning can and should be employed in our city. Landlords may not rent a building for a number of reasons. They may only want a certain type of businesses. They may be getting tax breaks for not having anybody in that building in the first place. 
they may want a certain price for the lease, or they may want only long-term renters. Whatever the reason, with a diverse and multifaceted approach, a vacancy tax can and should be implemented in our town, as it will be an effective method of fighting the vacancies. Before I go, I want to tell you my own personal story of trying to rent a space in Calistoga. You have three minutes. I'll give you 30 seconds. Okay. When I was looking for an office space as a consulting company, I reached out to a landlord um, who owns a number of spots in our city, and I knew full well before reaching out to him that he had vacancies. I reached out, and they questioned me on my business. After about 30 seconds, I was told that they did not want my business in their facility. So I ask you now, as city council members, what would you rather have? A storefront that's blocked up and with paper on the front of the windows, or a swept storefront with a sign in the window, no matter what that business is. I think it's time that we start looking at this as a serious issue. I, get, I sent you guys something that may not be effective to our town, but it's something that we should seriously consider going forward. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, and the vacancy tax is something that I had proposed and suggested probably about five years ago. Uh, I should say six years ago. And uh, the dynamic changed, but it's certainly something that I would suggest bringing back. We do know, as we've mentioned, there are several reasons why some of the stores are vacant currently. Seismic retrofit issues, generational uh, issues in terms of second parts, second generations of the family not wanting to take the business over, et cetera. But it is certainly something we're taking very seriously. And the city is working in cooperation with the Chamber of Commerce uh, to do a study downtown as well. Uh, but uh, to the point of the uh, vacancy fee, um, sometimes some people need a little more encouragement to fill their vacant space. So that's something we would certainly consider. So thank you very much. Uh, the next card I have is for James Jones. Mr. Jones, should you so choose, share with us your name and your address, but you're not required to do so. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, Madam Clerk, my name is Jim Jones. I'm an attorney down in Napa. And my address is 1564 First Street in Napa. And um, I'm here to speak today about something nice, non-controversial, helpful, and free. Uh, I'll try to keep myself in the three minutes. Um, I'm here as a member of the Board of Community Action Napa Valley. I have a handout that the city clerk was kind enough to distribute to council members. I don't have enough for the audience, and although I don't normally read things, it's short, and I'd like to do that just for the purpose of this presentation, which is just to let you know that this Community Action Agency is here on the ground in Calistoga, not just down in Napa, helping people here who need help. We like to think of CANV as the ultimate safety net below the other community safety nets. And when people fall through, we're there as the ultimate source of help. The mission of Community Action Napa Valley since 1968 is to provide services and resources that promote healthy living and encourage self-sufficiency for the most vulnerable members of our community. In 2018, CANV, which is what we call it, served 6,545 unduplicated individuals and 2,756 families through our programs. These include 138 students enrolled in attending CANV Kids, the State of California preschool program, and 97,101 Meals on Wheels were served to uh, county seniors Monday through Friday with no charge. Just under two million pounds of food was distributed last year by CANV through our food bank. A hundred people quit smoking by enrolling in our quit smoking program. The Napa Food Bank distributes nearly two million pounds of food per year. In Calistoga, the pantry, which is right over here on Oak Street, serves 145 households for a total of 447 individuals. 28 seniors are served by the Senior Brown Bag Program right here in Calistoga. 
Meals on Wheels provides nutritious meals annually to over 110,000 seniors who are homebound as well as those at local senior centers. A total of 3,900 meals are served in Calistoga each year. Our Quit Pro Smoking program provides cost-free, accessible quit smoking and tobacco awareness services to low-income residents and youth of Napa County. Considering the challenges we all face, without our programs, many individuals and families would find themselves falling into poverty and increased dependency. Our programs allow, encourage, and equip those whom we serve to become self-sufficient. We have the experience, tools, and compassion to lead our most vulnerable people from a place of need to where they join us in becoming fully integrated members of the community. And now here's the best part. The food bank and Meals on Wheels are financed through fundraising activities and community, so, uh, community support. We do not rely on any taxes at all. So thank you very much for your time. I just wanted to give you this little update about what can be Community Action Napa Valley actually does on the ground here in Calistoga at no cost to anybody. And we'd, with your permission, we'll probably be back in two or three months to tell you more about what we're doing. Thank you very much. Mr. Jones, thank you very much, and certainly a big thank you to your organization and all that participate. Uh, you have certainly made yourselves known and uh, uh, necessary in our community, and we appreciate that very much. Um, thank so thank you. Mr. Jones, I have a question. Thank yes. you Thank you for coming. Uh, sure. And uh, please express our appreciation to the volunteers as well who assist with the program. I'll certainly do that. Thank you. I uh, have a question about... Um, the um, self-sufficiency and the integration of the uh, recipients in the community. Are there metrics in that way, or is this uh, anecdotal? Or No, uh, we, we actually do have metrics. I mm -hmm. don't have them here, mm -hmm. but we do have a nice website, mm -hmm. Community Action Napa Valley, that can take you into some of those metrics. Great. Because we do hold ourselves accountable. It's not just fluff. Uh, you know, we're the people who um, the local police force may refer a car at 3 in the morning with twins 18 months old in wet diapers in the back seat on a cold night and no place to go. And we're very proud to be able to, to do that. So your website will have more information about yes. that? Yes. Thank indeed. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. You. And we're happy to have you back whenever you'd like to come Thank back. Thank you. I'll be glad to come. If you give us advance notice, we can give you five minutes in a presentation. How's that? Well, I've been looking forward to this for some of the months. My wife and I are now going to go out and contribute to the local economy. Well, that we appreciate as well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next, I have Mr. Jacob Schneider. Is there a Jacob Schneider in there? Just giving you a hard time. How are you? Good to see you. Should you so choose, share with us your address. Jacob Schneider, I own Cone and run Pacific Tree Care. Address is uh, 2585 Lake County Highway. Thank um, you, sir. Uh, I'll be fairly quick. I was asked to uh, come tonight to talk a little bit about um, an uptick in the Valley Oak mortality that we're seeing lately. Um, some of you may have noticed there was a um, public notice that went out for the closure of the Washington, Washington Street bike path uh, because of some tree removal. Um, we're seeing probably two, three times the number of valley oak, uh, valley oak trees succumbing to bark beetle attack than we have historically. Uh, typically, bark beetles associated with drought or some other stressor. Um, not entirely sure what is causing this, or um, you know what what the uh, what, what the actual causal insect is. Um, we have been working a little bit with some people from UC Berkeley um, who tend to focus more on the fungus side of things than the insect side of things. Um, but unfortunately, we're still seeing uh, a great number of valley oaks that are declining. Um, starts kind of up by Bennett Lane and runs, I've seen it now, as far south as uh, Blast Mountain Road. 
So started a few years ago, kind of a, a hot area over here by the elementary school, and it's progressively expanding. So we're still working with Berkeley, trying to get a little bit of extra help um, to try and find out what's what is actually causing this. Do we have a new pest around that the Valley Oaks aren't aren't uh, able to, to to deal with like they would normally, um, or are we dealing with the same pest that maybe is uh, more aggressive for some reason? Do you have any questions? First off, thank you. I appreciate uh, being here and sharing that, and I also appreciate the work you do, not just for the residents uh, and some of the commercial properties, but I know the city contracts with you as well. Um, this is a pretty significant situation. I know uh, first hearing about it several years ago, um, and it doesn't seem to be uh, slowing down at all. It's, it hasn't been slowing down. You know, I yeah. was kind of hoping to see this year maybe we'd, we'd slow things down with uh, more water. Typically, bark beetles will attack stress trees more than they will um, healthy trees. But in, in this case, it seems like they're after old trees, young trees. It doesn't doesn't really matter what. Um, there are some chemical treatments available. Nothing that we actually do, but chemical treatments that are available through uh, licensed pest control companies. Uh, both a trunk spray, which is moderately effective, or a systemic spray, or a systemic trunk injection, which can help that. But the, there are downsides to that in, um, in, a, in relation to bee populations. So um, we will continue to work on it. Thank you. And I, I, I know we do whenever we have to have a tree taken down. It is in the public right of way or on city property. Um, we do get uh, significant concerns expressed, and rightly so, from the community. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we are a city public agency. We are requiring, required to maintain the safety of those rights of way. Um, and while something might not look so bad to you, we do bring in the experts to share, and we are actually held to a higher degree of responsibility um, because we are a uh, public agency on a public right of way. And while that tree might not look so bad to you, all it takes is one branch to come down on a person um, a child and uh, we have some significant issues uh, but you know Jake will tell you uh, and Mike will tell you uh, that is the removal of that tree is always our last resort uh, but because of the higher uh, standard that we have to adhere to uh, inevitably some of those will have to come down yeah as these these trees are infected or attacked um, the combination of the insect and also whatever fungus they may be vectoring they're actually becoming a lot less structurally stable quicker than we've seen in the past. So we're seeing six, eight inch diameter limbs break out of trees that have only been dead for six months to a year, oh. which is pretty quick. Normally you start to see some one and two inch diameter stuff start to fall and stuff standing dead. Um, so it's something for us to all kind of keep an eye on. Well, thank you very much. Council members, any other questions? All right, thanks Jake. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, that's all I have for speaker cards under public comment. Is there anyone else wishing to address the council on a non-agendized item or a consent calendar item? All right, with that said, City Clerk, I will close oral communication. I'll entertain a motion to adopt this evening's agenda as presented unless a modification is requested. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Council Member Krause, a second by Vice Mayor Dunsford. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Uh, council requests and ideas for discussion. Council Member Williams. Uh, I have... Three quick uh, items. Um, first, uh, the um, appreciated Ms. Gift uh, bringing up the topic of the vacancy tax. I also had spoken with the previous city manager about that, and I'm open to that conversation uh, if the council decides to go there. I had a, a brief get acquainted meeting um, with the county sheriff, uh, very pleasant, and uh, as a result of that meeting, I also want to inform my colleagues here that I'm open to the topic of consolidation of the Sheriff's Department and uh, the Police Department. I'm not proposing anything, but simply informing you that that's a topic that is interesting to me. As a result of our conversation, um, he reminded me, and I'm speaking, I'm glad to be reminded, that uh, when the next disaster comes, which, which we are uh, learning is is likely uh, that government can only do so much about um, helping out our community and uh, the sheriff urged uh, all of us to be aware of uh, taking our own uh, proactive measures uh, and uh, defensive measures as well um, 
against the uh, fires or whatever kind of disaster is likely to be coming. And um, I repeat it uh, for the sake of the um, community and for myself too, because I tend to want to put that kind of thing off. So I think the sheriff had good advice there, and I want to uh, remind all of us that uh, the government can do so much, the council and the county, but that we also have to take our own defensive measures. Um, and finally, um, council members, I'm interested in uh, the topic of making our city manager permanent, whether it's um, and proceeding along that path. So I expect that uh, we haven't talked about that, but uh, it's something I'd like to uh, pursue. Thank you very much. On that topic, I was going to bring up, we will be proposing a closed session to discuss the next uh, phase in the search process. Thank you. Which we would then bring back to the public. Thank you. Councilmember Krause. Yes. Um, uh, one thing that kind of folds in with what uh, Donald just talked about, um, uh, I'm not as enamored with the uh, Sheriff's Department as perhaps other people are. Uh, for a lot of reasons I won't go on into. However, um, I would like to see us proceed with the uh, police chief recruitment. And I was under the impression with this previous city manager that we had uh, done some, I would say, verbal authorization from the council to proceed on finding recruiters and getting an idea of what we uh, need to do there. Uh, second thing is uh, I was approached by a resident of Riverly who's very concerned about the uh, proposed or not proposed but the new stoplight that we have uh, under design right now and his concern uh, revolves around getting out of Riverly and onto Foothill and during certain times of the day uh, all of the residents I would suspect are uh, have difficulty uh, leaving the neighborhood to go to work themselves and uh, and coming home so uh, if at some point uh, in the design phase if we could get a presentation uh, here as to just how that intersection will work specifically for the folks from Riverly and how they're going to get out onto Foothill during times of heavy traffic. So I know there's some things that can be done with timing of the lights, striping, and like that, but um, uh, there's some fear there, and I think we need to uh, let folks know how this is going to work out for them. And other than that, I don't have anything. On that topic, um, similar to what we're doing next week, which I'll make a mention of uh, in terms of a community forum or mayor's forum, um, let's make one of those topics the intersection implementation of the signalization of petrified forest road and foothill boulevard to address just a, such questions thank you very much um and i saw a few heads pop up um in case some of you are not aware it was publicly announced that our police chief will be retiring so it's not like we're having this awkward conversation about getting rid of our police chief with him sitting right there <laughs> So I think we have uh, till the end of the year, Chief. Is that it? End of. He chooses to extend my contract, yes, sir. Perfect. Thank you very much. I know he looks far too young to even consider retirement. Set uh, his second retirement, but um, you know, he's got a house full of kids to attend to as well. Probably a more difficult job. That'd be a reason for me to continue to work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Of course, you. my kids aren't your kids. But. <laughs> uh, Vice Mayor Dunsford. Nothing to add. All right, a couple topics. Um, just a reminder, we have a community forum next Wednesday, uh, May 15th at 6 p.m. in this facility. Uh, and the topic are the Grant Street improvements. Um, as some of you are aware, there will be some improvements being made to Grant Street, Upper Grant Street as we're referring to it, which are going to include roadway, curb, gutter, and sidewalk improvements. Uh, all of the adjacent properties and the neighbors have been notified of this meeting. Uh, for those of you who have not been to a community forum, sometimes called the mayor's forum, it's a much more informal uh, situation, so people can uh, ask more questions. We're not uh, restricted to the three-minute rule, the Brown Act, et cetera. 
Um, is there any particular council member, because we're only allowed one more, who's interested in the Grant Street who will participate in that meeting with myself and the staff subject matter experts? We're only allowed two. Well, Iris isn't here. Let's make her do it. All right. <laughs> <clears throat> Iris it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I... Do you have a proximity issue based on where you live? Uh, to Grant Street? No. I, I think I'm over 500 feet from, I'm certain I'm over 500 okay, feet. Okay, so the two participating right, so. council members at the community forum will be myself and Council Member Krause. Um, and then the second note I wanted to make is we will be adjourning this evening's meeting in honor of a very special Calistogan who has done uh, tremendous work uh, in volunteer service uh, and just basically improving the attitude of Calistoga for many years and with the passing of uh, Sylvia Marciano this past week. So uh, we will miss her and we will adjourn this evening's uh, meeting in her honor. With that said, we'll move on to a very long list of proclamations, presentations, and awards. And we will start with number one, which is the proclamation proclaiming May as Building Safety Month. Um, and because there's nobody here to receive that, nobody tell them we're going to short circuit this one. The City of Calistoga proclamation proclaiming May as Building Safety Month, signed Chris Canning, Mayor of City of Calistoga. Oh, oh you're going to come get it? You're going to make me read the whole thing? No. All right. I'll... This is just saying we have a great building safety department. Thank you. Lynn, I had you on the agenda for a different topic, so. All right, moving on. Item number two, proclamation <clears throat> proclaiming May as Mental Health Awareness Month, and I believe we have someone here to receive that. If you'll go up to the podium, I will read the proclamation, and then I will join you, and you'll have an opportunity to share with us uh, what you guys are up to. Uh, City of Calistoga proclamation proclaiming May as Mental Health Awareness Month. Whereas one in five individuals will experience mental health issues in their lifetime, which can affect parents, sisters, brothers, spouses, coworkers, and others in our lives. And whereas it is essential to eliminate disparities in mental health by promoting well-being for all, regardless of race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, language, place of residence, or age, and ensure equity of access, delivery of services, and improvement of outcomes. And whereas the Mental Health Division seeks to reduce barriers to access, improve community outreach and engagement that ensures culturally and linguistically competent care to diverse communities through culturally competent services and policies. And whereas while there is still much work to be done to eliminate disparities in services and increase education about mental health illness, Napa County service providers are to be commended for their community collaborative approach when working with individuals in need. Whereas there is a strong body of research documenting that with support and treatment between 70 and 90 percent of individuals with mental health mental illness have a significant reduction in symptoms and improved quality of life and whereas every Napa County resident can be an ally by learning about and dispelling the myths related to mental illness and eliminating stigma by treating individuals with mental illness with respect. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Chris Canning, Mayor of the City of Calistoga, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2019 as Mental Health Awareness Month in the City of Calistoga, signed and sealed the 7th day of May 2019. Please introduce yourselves and share with us who you represent and what your guys are up to, and then I'll bring this up to you. Okay, um, I'm Lisa Davison, and I'm with Mentis, and we are the oldest nonprofit in the Valley, and we um, are located in Napa, however, we service the entire county. Um, I particularly am here at Calistoga Elementary School, and I see kids from kindergarten on up through sixth grade and then um, I'll let Irene introduce herself. So my name is Irene Peña. Uh, I'm with Mentis too. I'm a bilingual therapist. Uh, we, I actually work in three different schools. I work at the elementary school and I also serve kids from all the way from kindergarten to sixth grade and I also work at the high school serving middle kids in high school and I'm also at a different school in NWIN. But I just want to say, I mean, like, being part of the community in Calistoga for 20-plus years, it's a pleasure for me to serve my community at this level 
and I'm just so grateful that now the schools are finally able to have probably like I want to say uh, Calistoga schools were pretty much the start for now NetMent is working at 10 different schools all throughout the valley and now including Sonoma and so we've never had anything like this so it's very unique just to be able to help our kids in the community and help them achieve a better quality of life so thank you Being very familiar with Mentis and the work that you guys do, you have served us very well, and we appreciate that. And please continue to do so and uh, share, send our regards to everyone that you work with back there. Next proclamation is proclamation proclaiming May 5th through the 11th, 2019, as Municipal Clerks Week. Do you want the whole thing, Irene? Whereas the Office of Municipal Clerk is a time-honored and vital part of local government that exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, and whereas the Office of the Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at other levels, and whereas Municipal Clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the Office of the Municipal Clerk through participation in education, programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, province, county, and international professional associations. And whereas it is, not, it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Municipal Clerk, now therefore be it resolved that I, Chris Canning, Mayor of the City of Calistoga, do proclaim the week of May 5th through the 11th, 2019, as Municipal Clerk's Week in the City of Calistoga, signed May 7th, 2019. Congratulations, thank you. And I think there's a Hallmark card for Municipal Clerks Week, right? Did you get one? Here you are. <laughs> and while uh, you're very new to us, you're already doing an amazing job. So thank you very much. <laughs> oh, that's why the cookies are here? Oh. Those are a free for all, folks. All right, uh, moving on. The City of Calistoga proclamation proclaiming May as National Bike Month, where the City of Calistoga is committed to making our community safer and more convenient for bicycle commuters and encouraging increased bicycle use. And whereas the Calistoga Active Transportation Plan identifies many benefits of bicycle ridership, including reduced congestion, reduced greenhouse gas emissions, and improved public health. And whereas riding a bicycle for transportation or recreation is a fun, endorphin-filled way to get around and riding just three days a week can have significant health benefits including improved cardiovascular strength and weight loss. Whereas the City of Calistoga encourages everyone to participate in Bike to Work and School Day on May 9th and to consider bicycling for short trips more often. Now therefore be resolved that I, Chris Canning, Mayor of the City of Calistoga, do hereby proclaim the month of May is Bike Month and May 9th specifically as Bike to Work and School Day in the City of Calistoga, signed Chris Canning, Mayor of the City of Calistoga. I just have to say that I grew up on the East Coast in a very hilly community, and we were forced to ride our bikes everywhere. The fact that every child in this community doesn't ride their bike in this very flat town <laughs> is appalling. Um, no, but with that said, um, we appreciate uh, the work that the Napa Valley Bike Coalition does and everyone here does, does to support um, a safer and more bike-friendly town. Um, and for those of you that may not be aware, if there are children in your family, children in your neighborhood that you see riding their bicycle, first give them a thumbs up for riding their bike, and second, if they're riding their bicycle without a helmet, there is no excuse because Calistoga Fire Department will issue free helmets to any child in Calistoga. Um, and I know this to be true because my neighbor kid was riding without the helmet. They went and got their helmet and two weeks later was riding without their helmet again because he forgot in his garage. But I took advantage of my policing powers and forced him to dismount his bicycle and go to his garage and get his helmet. So. But uh, that's an important thing to, uh, to remind kids. We want them on their bikes, and not having a helmet is not an excuse not to ride the bike. And if there are children in your neighborhood or your family that would like to ride their bikes, 
and they don't have the financial means to get a bike, we have a solution for that as well with many different agencies. So please let us know. Thank you very much. Moving on, proclamation proclaiming May 5th through the 11th, 2019 as National Travel and Tourism Week. Yay! That's what helps pay for those bike helmets. Um, <laughs> If anyone's here to receive this, please approach the podium and I will read this for you. City of Calistoga proclamation proclaiming May 5th through the 11th, 2019 as National Travel and Tourism Week. Whereas the city of Calistoga has been a travel destination since the 1860s when Sam Brannan opened his Hot Springs Hotel and visitors would enjoy the summer months relaxing and enjoying the volcanic hot springs. And whereas today the travel industry continues to have positive effect on Calistoga and Napa County's economic prosperity with visitor spending on lodging generating $6.3 million in tax revenue for the city of Calistoga alone over half of the city's budget. And whereas in 2018, traveler spending in Napa County generated $2.23 billion in economic output, supporting an estimated 15,872 jobs and generating tax revenues of $85.1 million for county and local governments, funds used to support essential services and programs for our communities. And whereas leisure travel, which accounts for more than three quarters of all trips taken in the United States, spurs countless benefits to travelers, health and wellness, creativity, cultural awareness, education, happiness, productivity, and relationships. And now therefore be it proclaimed that I, Chris Canning, Mayor of the City of Calistoga, do hereby proclaim May 5th through the 11th, 2019 as National Travel and Tourism Week in Calistoga and urge the citizens of Napa County to join me in the special observance signed 7th day of May 2019. So if you could share with us who you are and share with us any comments you'd like, I will bring this up to you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council Members, for uh, having this today for us. I'm Catherine Haywood. I'm with Visit Napa Valley. And why am I wearing a Tourism Gives Back shirt? In celebration of National Travel and Tourism Week, we had today 100 volunteers activated cleaning up the Vine Trail in preparation for Bike to Work Day. So um, once that trail goes from Calistoga to St. Helena, we'll have a lot more geography to cover. And as you just heard, there's 15,000 people who support tourism in their jobs. So a lot of excitement, a lot of social media out there um, with people really proud of what we did today. Um, I would like to introduce a couple of colleagues from the tourism industry. Gentlemen. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Donald Stamets, General Manager for Solage, uh, resident of Yountville, but uh, really excited to be here, and uh, thank you so much for the proclamation. And on behalf of uh, both Hobears Resorts here in Calistoga, we're thrilled to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then, hello, Troy Campbell, um, Executive Director of the Calistoga Chamber of Commerce and recipient of the city contract. Uh, we have some exciting things coming up um, this year. Um, and. Uh, so I want to thank the mayor for the proclamation um, for this important uh, industry that uh, generates a ton of tax and for the city and um, and yeah more to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to add. We have our 2018 study out. So a, perhaps a future agenda item might be to share the economic impact report with the council, as well as any video um, visitor profile data that you might enjoy. Thank you very much. Good idea. Thank you. And on all these opportunities. <laughs> on all of these occasions, I'd like to remind people, tourism is not a new industry in Calistoga. It's, be, it's the reason the town was created, and it's been here officially since 1862. All right, moving on. We have a presentation on Foothill Boulevard traffic update leading us through this will be Chief Salaya. And this is a follow-up to uh, some requests made uh, for Im improved traffic enforcement. Chief. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, City Council members. Acting City Manager and City Clerk, thank you for having me this evening. Mm -hmm. I'm here to provide a verbal uh, update on uh, traffic issues specific to Foothill. Uh, that has been a source of community complaints and issues as it was here a couple city council meetings ago. 
So just an update. I provided you a, a, a draft of some talking points that I was going to cover. I'm putting together a draft of a proposed traffic plan, at least a guide for us to move forward with, with the city of Calistoga, but also focusing on, on Foothill. So at the moment, the status of Foothill is we've stepped up our traffic enforcement in two phases. One is actual traffic enforcement, making traffic stops, uh, issuing citations, and the other is doing uh, traffic enforcement as far as just sitting and observing to monitor traffic flow to engage in traffic stops. And so when you see the document, you'll see traffic enforcement, which is basically sitting in an area, targeting an area, and then obviously the resulting is traffic stops that come out of that. Um, um, some of the numbers, just to give you an idea, that we have increased our, our activity levels um, for uh, traffic stops. For year to date, from January 1st to today, uh, we wrote about 100, almost 350 traffic citations, or 350 ci stops, not citations, traffic stops. Uh, of those, 40% of those stops were done on the, in and around the area of Foothill. Uh, from January till uh, end of March, it was 82. But after our meeting, uh, we did 42 traffic stops in April uh, and another uh, little more than a dozen and then uh, after that. So uh, almost 60% uh, of our stops have increased just on, on uh, Foothill. And so we're going to continue to do that. Uh, with the forward thinking of Public Works, they actually ordered six new uh, radar signs. Four of them are, uh, I'm sorry, five of them are uh, solar generated or solar powered and one of them is hardwired uh, so we're in the process of picking locations for those clearly two of those are going to go on foothill at least that's going to be our recommendation the idea was put one in and around the area of the cemetery because there's power we can draw from there and can, we can plug the one in there to collect uh, or to track individuals coming into town uh, the second one I'm going to propose the public works to go around Spring Street collect uh, tracking individuals coming into town, the idea is that we don't want them to get too far into Foothill before and we want to let people know how fast they're going and so we can use them as part of traffic enforcement. So we're going to look, uh, I'm going to look at those areas more closely with Public Works to make sure those are feasible areas. Uh, the other part of Foothill is it's, it's a unique location because it's within the city limits, however it's also a state highway. And uh, the the reality is, is that for us to effectively do traffic enforcement, particularly speeding, there are a number of roads that have to have speed surveys. And by law, the requirements for speed surveys is any roads that are that don't meet this, that do not meet this criteria as far as they have to be more than uh, a half mile in length with no traffic controls. They have to be roads that are greater than 40, uh, 40 feet across and at least two lanes of traffic going in either direction. And we've identified a number of roads in Calistoga, not that <coughs> many, but Foothill is one, of those, is one of those roads. We've reached out to uh, Caltrans. They have shared with us that they would be responsible for that. But if not, uh, we do have a contractor that we can um, uh, contract those services through, I think it's WTrans. Uh, it's an organization that uh, Public Works has, has done business with. Uh, so we're trying to get a timeline from Caltrans as far as when they can need to complete those and if not tell me whether we want to step up and take care of that ourselves. Now with full disclosure I do wish to share that here's the nuance with traffic surveys. So you do a traffic survey, it is collecting data, the number of vehicles, speed of the vehicles, uh, there's an engineer that has to do an engineer's analysis of, of the vehicles and the data. They use an 85th percentile as far as determining what that is. And the, the, the unintended consequence could be is that they could determine that the speed limit could be greater or uh, lesser than what is posted there now. So uh, that, is, you know, that is something we'll have to contend with once we get the survey with. And that goes for any road we survey in the city of Calistoga. So, with that said, I'm open to any questions. Uh, I, I give you a little bit of data uh, as far as other areas of town, such as pedestrian safety, uh, calming devices, things like that, uh, crossings that we might want to look at for the city of Calistoga, but specific for Foothill, uh, given the significant complaint is 
speeding, I'm keeping my comments uh, specific to that, which which be the surveys, the increased enforcement, and the uh, uh, the radar signs. Uh, on another note, I've contacted both the CHP and Sheriff's Department and asked them for increased presence. I, I will share with you that CHP and the county are more than happy to do so. CHP is more than happy to do enforcement, but they were very clear that without the traffic survey, they would not be issuing speeding citations. Understood. Um, and w when do you propose the traffic safety plan to be completed? I know we have a draft in front of us. Well, I'm going to have a follow-up conversation with the, uh, the uh, acting city manager uh, to propose this, to push this forward, because there will be some costs associated. I have to pull that together. And uh, I'd like to be able to propose it at the, uh, the budget hearing uh, this Thursday. And the streets or the locations that you've identified, these are where we get the most significant complaints and issues um, on the front of this draft? Correct. So the, if you could the, just read them off for the folks at home. Yeah. So Foothill Boulevard obviously is one. Grand Avenue, uh, Brandon Street, uh, the Pine Cedar Myrtle area for the uh, rush hour traffic, people cutting through. Uh, Berry Street, again, usually people cutting through town. And Cedar Street, Lincoln Avenue, people coming into town. Uh, Washington Street, uh, typically uh, around the, the 3rd Street onto North Oak, and then Lower Washington. Uh, I'm sure that as I read those out, residents are going to say, well, what about this street? What about that street? Those are the common streets I typically get complaints about. Uh, of those streets, the streets we've determined that based on the criteria that would need surveys would be Lincoln Avenue, Grant Street, Mora Avenue, and Foothill. Uh, so we are, uh, so at least for uh, Grant and Mora, we would need, uh, we would probably have to gauge a, a engineer to actually do the surveying for us. Uh, I'm also engaging Caltrans on Lincoln because that is also a, a state highway. So, okay. And then specific to that, if um, you're going to get a uh, an estimate on what conducting that traffic survey will be, and if it, if Caltrans, no offense to Caltrans, but if it's on their radar screen five years from now, and this council determines we want it sooner than that, we'll at least have a cost by which to make a help us make a decision. Correct. Okay. Um, and the only other thing I'd like to add before I open it to other council members, uh, the radar signs that we have throughout the community, I'm a big fan. I think they're very effective. Certainly they don't stop everyone, and bad behavior is bad behavior. Um, the only recommendation I'd like to see is actually on the radar sign itself, the posted speed limit below the digital marker that shows you what you're actually doing so that you have something to compare it to so you can see how far afoul you are. So if we could just post... Now, if you're in a 35 zone, have the 35 below, and then you'll see exactly what you're doing. And part of the strategies that are listed is not only for the new radar signs, but for the existing ones, is to go back. And typically, there are yellow signs that go above that that give the actual speed limit, and then it's your speed. And then we want to program them so uh, if it's 5, 10, whatever miles over the speed limit, it actually flashes and says slow down. Great. But, uh, you know, the, the signs itself, I'll, I think most people realize that uh, the signs are only as effective, as effective as those individuals that pay attention to them. Sometimes it's, as they go through, they look at them to see how fast they're going. Uh, they, it is a combination of enforcement in addition to the signs, uh, so, which is why I've increased the expectations for my staff to be out there and conducting more traffic enforcement than we have in the past. I live on Myrtle Street just off of Lily, and that's my exit out of town. And I can say just since the meet, two meetings ago or last meeting when it was brought up, um, there's certainly a significant increase in presence there. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Any other council members before I open it to the public? So thank you, Chief, for those efforts um, to um, begin to control that, that speeding. Do you have a sense of the effectiveness of the efforts? That, uh, how do you is, is that measurable or is it are they making are those efforts making a difference well i think they make a difference unfortunately i have to say that in some cases as soon as uh, our vehicles drive away you know the bad behavior continues for some it has an impact but for many it's while we're there and so it's it is going to be a, cha a continuing challenge for us as far as putting uh, uh some more cons consistent effort as far as reducing that uh, through education but also Enforcement, unfortunately, is what actually drives most individuals' behavior. Any other council members? I've uh, 
sort of on this subject. I've noticed uh, in a couple of intersections that we have uh, some places where cars have been spinning donuts. I don't know if they're actually doing sideshows there or whether we just have um, somebody that's taken upon themselves to have a little fun and do that. Uh, have you received any specific complaints other than this happened in the neighborhood? I personally have not heard any complaints uh, of complaints coming in to dispatch from my staff. I'm not saying that it hasn't been. It's not a regular occurrence. Uh, I have seen in some of the parking lots where you'll see you know signs of like donuts being spent by I would think maybe some younger individuals but it doesn't seem to be an ongoing issue but something that I would encourage the community if they hear those kinds of things please call us so we can uh, uh, go in the area and, and hopefully deter if not stop those individuals I, I don't think it's happening every day but I I have noticed it in a couple of locations and it's always possible to have an accident as a result so Gary I'm curious where have you heard about those happening I haven't heard about that I haven't heard them but I've seen the skid marks in the street uh, Lincoln and Silverado right where Lincoln and Silverado comes up just the other day I noticed some some skidding there there's also over at Money Lane and Emerald I've noticed uh, uh, some skid over there and the thing is kids can do it real quick I'm pretty sure it's not senior citizens uh, you know they can they can do it real quick and then just be out of the area by the time you were to hear something like got that going on and then go out the front door and then try to find a uh, a license number or, or or something it's it's kind of an offense that happens pretty quickly so um, but you can rest assured that if I have the opportunity to identify somebody I'd call it in Thank you. Um, I have one speaker card, but anyone else is willing uh, is, is welcome to address Sheila Allen. Should you so choose, please share with us your name and your address. Um, yeah, my name is Sheila Allen. I live at 1906 Foothill Boulevard, and I have been observing the radar signs, and they're not working. They are not working. Um, often, not working as in they're not posting the speed well, or they're not slowing people down they're not slowing people. okay so but they're technically and working. the one that just recently um, you put in in the last week because the first ones were not working at all but um, the one recently has been working throughout the week because I've made a couple calls to the police department saying the other ones worked so they are working but I've been videotaping myself right outside my door and people are going minimum 42 miles an hour some 38 to 42 but a lot of them are going 47 to 51 miles an hour right at Lillian High Street now it's even worse in the morning from 6 to 8 o'clock in the morning my fellow uh, Calistogans right here will say the same thing that live on Foothill it's crazy if you don't have a radio on or the TV on at six to eight o'clock in the morning you are just bombarded by this traffic like where do I live do I live in a small town or do you live by a freeway seriously it, it, it's exhausting I mean I have to leave my house just to get away from it because I live on that main road and you know a lot of us been talking on next door um, an app on uh, Facebook and 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 a lot of us are, are saying, why can't we put more stop signs? Why can't we have the CHP involved on, on, in this with us? You know, and where are you hiding out, police officers? I'm always out there. I don't see any police. I, 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 you know, I know you say you're there, but I don't see them. And then there was an accident on April 29th right outside on Lillian High Street. How, what was that caused? By a speeder? Somebody pulling out of uh, Lily Street and going on to Foothill. What was that accident about? That's what I, I, I wanted to ask you today because you probably know about it. Um, you know, and fire chief, and by the way, I did see a fire truck going 49 miles an hour coming this way. So there's the fire trucks too that don't obey those signs as well. Um, it's just very frustrating. I just think, why can't we do more? Why can't we do more? I mean, this is, I mean, I live on that street. When my parents bought that house in 1970, it was a small town. It was not this kind of traffic. Four counties using that highway? I mean, come on. I mean, we need to, you know, step it up and really address these speeders. 
Because I could never have, I could never ride a bike down there. I don't know how they ride bikes. I mean, they zoom by you so fast, putting out your garbage. They zoom by you. They don't care. And it's very frustrating as, as a resident. I mean, you can't even go in your backyard to hear all that traffic. But, you know, who knew? Who knew when, when my parents bought this house? I just, I'm so frustrated with it. I've got a video. If I show the chief, you know, the video, he would be shocked. I mean, it's like, oh, my gosh. I see what you're saying, Sheila. You know, and then Officer Tim met me out last time. And he says, unfortunately, the Calistogans won't like it if they get ticketed. I can't understand why they wouldn't, because if you're not obeying the law, why should you not, uh, not get ticketed? You you're know, and why can't we put three a radar? Three minutes and 30 seconds, so please okay. wrap up. Why can't we put a camera by the radar? Why can't we just stick a camera up there and, and, and get their license and ticket them in the mail? What would what, what, what be so hard about that? And you're right, we need one going this way as well, because they're speeding out of Calistoga as well. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you very please much. Please do more. Thank you. Um, there's nothing we're going to be able to do about the volume of traffic on that road since 1970 something, but we can certainly, uh, and the chief has outlined what we're uh, doing uh, in terms of the addressing the speed as best we can. Uh, the traffic survey would apply to any cameras we tried to collect data on to issue citations until the survey is done as required by the state. Um, but you have seen, I certainly have seen more presence out there. Um, and then we'll continue on that. Is there anyone else wishing to address this? Yes, please. Please share with us your name and your address, should you so choose. Yeah, thank you. Uh, m my name is uh, Ismail Ackerman, and my wife Candy is here. We, we live at 1619 Foothill Boulevard. And we just got wind of this uh, meeting and the issue just about an hour ago, just almost by access. So I'm glad to hear about it. And first of all, I want to say thank you for doing what you're doing. And I, I just want to emphasize the need to do something about the traffic. It's uh, in the 15 years we've been there, it has really changed dramatically. We're right at that stage at 1619 where those trucks are downshifting as they're coming into town. And you hear that roar because they're trying to slow down. And it really is, uh, I mean, we de we're dealing with the reality. I know it's, it's busy highway traffic. It's necessary for people coming and going to business and all that. But it's really gotten out of control in terms of speed. And... Uh, Whatever you can do, I know you can't do stop signs, I know you can't do speed bumps, and you know, being realistic, uh, I think the, the most logical thing is what you mentioned is getting those things that says slow down, slow down. At least some, some, some people will pay attention to it. And I think the, most, the best uh, behavior change would be ticketing. And uh, I have, I have not. I'd be curious to know where, where are the uh, the police station and stuff? Because I have not seen them. So I can tell. You, I've been out there several times, and personally, and I just past the uh, Morphless is uh, is where I where the bridge is. Okay. And then around Spring Street. So I try to catch people, you know, not while they're in the middle, what I consider the middle of Foothill, around, uh, you know, Barry yeah, nice. Lily. Yeah. But to catch them as they're going in, as opposed to catch them as they're coming out in the center. So, uh, so I, I'm not typically sitting, nor most of my officers sitting in those locations. But we can certainly move them around. Uh, you're you're, you're the welcome to stay at our driving uh, and, and that's driveway the, if you like, because they're they're uh, they're really picking up speed right when it gets a learner. I mean, they're just roaring down that way at that point. Yeah. yeah. One up above High Street, hide out up up High Will it? Will will address. Okay, anyway, that's enough said. So I, I do appreciate your efforts for that. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Anyone else wishing to address, please? Please share with us your name and your address, should you so choose. I am Sean Williams, and I live on Emerald Drive. And yes, I have heard wheelies at Emerald and Money. And my question is, is there data on how many car accidents are on Foothill Boulevard? I have some information on that. Um, I can tell you that this year there were 19 incidents, but only five, uh, I say only, that's uh, five uh, reported traffic collisions. Those all five that were reported were on Foothill. Uh, three of them were DUIs. Uh, one of them was, uh, the cause was uh, a distracted driving and one was speeding. Thank you. Anyone else? Please. Good evening. I'm Nancy Smith. I live on Cedar Street, corner of Cedar and Silver. 
And I do want to commend that I have noticed, and I go out foothill all the time, I've noticed the new speed telling, what, I've noticed cars out there being parked. So I noticed that they have been, the city has been stepping it up there, and I just wanted to acknowledge that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Anyone else? All right, I will close public comment and bring it back to the council. Any other questions? Chief, thank you very much. So, yes, I yes, thank, yes, thank you for the report and thank you for the comments. Um, so, to put stop signs there, you know, in the middle of Foothill, say, does that require um, Caltrans approval? Caltrans approval. Did it require the survey that you talked about or that? Uh, I'm sure it would. Um, I mean, I can engage Caltrans on that, but I, I don't. I see that as a significant hurdle based on my experience for a highway. And then uh, cameras, uh, cameras um, that uh, photograph license plate, uh, issue tickets. I know that's controversial in the city, in San Francisco, for example. But um, does Cal I suppose Caltrans has to be involved again, and is a survey again required to do that kind of thing? I will have to look into that. I'm not sure. And most of the the uh, camera systems are usually for stop sign uh, or stop lights. They're usually for signal lights. Mm -hmm. And so for a stop sign, you know, I just really hadn't thought about it until this came up, the stop sign there. So what kind of objections do you anticipate Caltrans might raise? Any, th any ideas on that? It, w it doesn't, uh, having been through this before okay. over on Silver Road Trail, yes. uh, it does not come anywhere close to meeting any state highway standard that would even allow mm -hmm. Caltrans to consider a stop sign. And because even, it's not, a, it'd be the middle of the runway, mm -hmm. basically the middle of the roadway. There's mm -hmm. no significant intersection. Mm -hmm. um, so, it, I mean, it would, so first I would be stunned if they even would consider it. Uh, we could make the request, um, but when you think about the runway between Foothill Boulevard and Petrified Forest to Lincoln Avenue, those are two significant intersections. Mm -hmm. uh, there isn't a justification for throwing a stop sign between either of those two because none, none of the crossroads are deemed actually they're all are they secondary or tertiary tertiary residential mm -hmm. so 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 even uh you know municipal statement um of interest in the stop sign caltrans says forget it is that what you expect that's what our experience has been but we can ask that question yeah because then we'll be in a different situation when we're sitting here with a room with 10 times as many people telling us why would you put a stop sign on there mm -hmm. and creating more traffic and backing it up mm -hmm. and the people who live anywhere near the stop sign and hear the screeching of the brakes, the starting of the engines. Um, yeah. So it's something, it's something that could be explored. Sure. Yeah. But uh, yeah. setting expectations, um, yeah, the question can be asked. Yeah. There are very different rules when it comes to state highways and that is a uh, significant obstacle. I wouldn't want to put out there into the universe, you know, we're going to consider a stop sign on there um, when, you know, what it took for us to get a stop sign. Uh, well, actually, we've been denied on that other one, but it could yeah. be asked. And you see, I'm just trying to be responsive to these legitimate concerns that are being raised. Which I appreciate, but I also, <clears throat> I come from a school of thought, let's set expectation as mm -hmm. well and the reality of it. And I think we have to address it. I think we have to address it through the, the methods and means that we're doing. Can I ask another question? Very quickly. If we're in a city limit, but our roadway is a highway, mm -hmm. why is it 35 miles an hour when it should maybe be 45 or 50 if it was a highway like it is now to 29 and 128? And so someone rose up to me, you're on, you're on 128 highway, Sheila. Mm -hmm. uh, Hill, it's 128 highway. So that's the chief's, regarding the survey, that was the chief's caution to us. If we have Caltrans come out, do that survey, there is the possibility, I won't say likelihood, but possibility that they repost that to 45 miles an hour. So it's one of these, we need to be careful what we wish for. Um, but we will explore it. We'll even consider us funding it if that is what the community wants. But we do need to uh, consider. Because when that first speed limit was posted, you know, decades ago, um, we had a very different traffic situation. And Caltrans concept is to keep traffic flowing and if that means speed it up and a survey can determine that's the right thing to do then you've got to be careful of that all right we'll be and moving if, up uh, oh, it, sorry. if the solution is to uh, issue citations and I'm not sure that it would uh, affect tourists going through town because they're 
here and gone. It, I think the citation program would be more effective on local residents. Um, you're not going to be able to do the citations until the speed survey is done. So it's it's one of those things you got to. I, I I think we move forward with the speed survey with all possible speed. Yes. All right. Moving on to the consent calendar. Thank you all. Um, consent calendar. I will entertain a motion on the consent calendar with the exclusion of items number eight, nine, and twelve. So I'll entertain a motion to move on everything except eight, nine, and twelve. I'd like to pull number ten as well. Uh, make that eight, nine, ten, and twelve. I'll move the consent. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Vice Mayor Dunsford. We have a second by Council Member Krause. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. On items number eight and nine, I had those pulled because we have a proximity recusal by Council Member Krause. Proximity being he lives within a certain number of feet. So I'll entertain a motion on items number eight and nine, excluding or with the understanding that there'll be an abstention or recusal from Council Member Krause. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Vice Mayor Dunsford, a second by Council Member Williams. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Coming on to item number 10, resolution establishing a permit technician position within the planning and building department and adding position to salary schedule. The recommended action this evening is consideration to adopt resolution. Uh, taking us through this item will be Acting City Manager Kern. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Mike Kern, uh, Acting City Manager, Public Works Director. The item before you is uh, consideration adopting a resolution to establish a permit a technician position within the planning and building department in coordination and consultation with the planning director Lynn Goldberg uh, and myself um, we have an opportunity with the uh, upcoming retirement of Jill Saunders to uh, convert an administrative position to a permit tech position the reasoning behind that is that as we get an more and more uh, sophisticated with our building codes and our land use codes. Um, it's our feeling that having somebody very knowledgeable with the permitting um, criteria at the front counter can help to streamline and, and make things move quickly through the process. Not that it doesn't move quickly now, but it, it just provides a, a, a better level of um, first communication to, to the public. Um, the building codes are constantly changing. They're becoming more sophisticated. So there's a desire to have that um, front counter knowledge uh, for that individual. The city recognized the potential for converting this position when we did the cough study last year. So we rec specifically requested that that position be included in that analysis. Um, as an outcome of that, um, it was benched because it is a new position within the city and it was benched against other communities uh, that were in that survey. Um, it is one range above what the current position is, so that's two and a half percent. So in our opinion, it, it's spot on. Um, it is a little bit more sophisticated, but it's not like we're jumping, you know, 43% to, to put in a, a, a different position there. So the recommendation is to adopt the resolution that establishes a position, adopts the um, job description, and sets the, that position at that salary range recommended by the cough study. Um, myself and Lynn are here for any questions that you may have. So for clarification, it is a replacement of a position, not in, in addition to, not Correct. an incremental. Correct. It's a, it's a 2.5% increase over what might be the current budget hit. Um, it should be noted that Jill's current position, she's at step five, so she's at the top of the range. Um, we would anticipate that a new hiree would be brought in probably at maybe range one or step one or two. So the two and a half percent would, it would almost be a salary savings uh, on the initial hire. Thank you very much. Councilmember Williams. Yes, I think it makes a lot of sense. I appreciate the planning department um, um, elevating the uh, the uh, requirements so the uh, job description there I think makes a lot of sense and I thank you for that um, I would like to uh, are you authorized um, Mr. Kern to offer the um, position at a range different than 19 if the candidate pool um, suggests that that's possible for example if you have a large number of applicants and you're able to get a, a strong applicant at a range less than 19, are you empowered to do that? Or if you're not, I'd like the council to empower him 
to do that if the uh, pool uh, permits that. So, I, for example, you have, it's not, we have a, a position, a, an administrative position, I think, that's open, and there are 35, a number of applicants, and it's scheduled at a certain level. With that many applicants, um, that indicates that the uh, level probably is higher than it has to be. And um, I think it'd be important for the public getting the best value for the buck to, uh, to offer to a candidate who might be at a lower, uh, who might be happy to uh, take the job at a lower level uh, if that candidate is qualified. So a couple of things um, I would caution on, on doing that. One, the cost study says this is what it should be. Um, that's a benchmark if we were to start arbitrarily deciding internally or at some administrative level that the position needs to be at a lower um, range lower than what range. the study mm -hmm. suggests um, will, I guess for simple terms, turn the apple cart upside down uh, because where does it stop? If, if we make one exception, um, it, it's kind of like the thread of a sweater. When do you stop pulling on it pretty soon? If you don't, you don't have a sweater. Uh, secondarily, when the positions are advertised, they're advertised with a range of salaries, and so people have a, an understanding of what they are actually applying for. Um, finally, just because we get a significant number of applicants for a position does not mean that they're all qualified for that position, and in many instances, um, I'll say more than half of them don't meet the minimum qualifications and therefore don't make it on to the next round of review. So this has been advertised at the range, uh, 19. At range 19? Correct. Yeah. So, so I'd like us to consider in the future uh, authorizing the city manager to use discretion um, if the applicant pool is large enough to warrant <coughs> a different range. In the private sector, um, as you know, uh, we wouldn't rely on consultants necessarily to dictate the salary schedules for um, if the pool is different than what the consultants expect. So if you've advertised it already at that range, then I don't see that there's going back. But I'd like us to consider in the future. Um, there, uh, yeah. <clears throat> there are a lot of reasons we can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons that we have ranges and they're established ranges, especially mm -hmm. when you have a represented mm -hmm. um, workforce, mm -hmm. um, would create uh, legal complications. Um, it would also, you know, we, we, the city manager has within their authority to work within that range. Mm -hmm. They can't go above that range. They can't go below that range. So there are pretty strong boundaries that they already have. Um, you know, I, I for one couldn't support, mm -hmm. you know, based on how many people apply because to, to Mike's point, you're applying for a position at a certain rate um, to change that as you enter the process based on supply and demand, that doesn't qualify how, should, sorry, that doesn't represent how qualified that supply may be. Sure. Um, we've established and when we go through the cost study and we go through the salary ranges and budgeting all that out, um, that's when the uh, the council weighs in on, you know, establishing or approving the ranges that have been set. Yeah. Okay. So let me ask a question of, of Mike. Was this job description um, brought before the uh, Calistoga Public Employees Association or their representative? Yes. And they uh, would then be representing whoever becomes the incumbent in this position, correct? Correct. Okay, um, and then uh, uh, the other uh, issue is is that um, these positions, uh, even if they weren't represented, uh, would be subject to the Myers Millius Brown Act, which goes back into the 1960s and says that any changes in working conditions, salary, and like that, are subject to a beat and confer process. So. Mike has the ability uh, to appoint somebody uh, from steps one to five within the agreed to range with the bargaining unit. So um, uh, 
I used to negotiate for uh, uh, a uh, International Association of Firefighters when I was a firefighter in Southern California. So uh, labor law changes every year. So I'm not as current as uh, as some folks would be, but I can tell you that um, I, the problems that uh, the mayor alluded to would would definitely uh, be there if Mike was to uh, take it upon himself to say, well, we've got a lot of applicants. Instead of range 19, let's try range 17 or something like that. So what, what would most likely happen is that there would be a grievance filed by the by the CPEA, the Calistoga Public Employees Association, um, feigning that we're not honoring both the cough study and the MOU uh, that was recently adopted. And I, I certainly don't want to begin my tenure, even <laughs> if it's a short one, um, in, in starting, you know, poking that hornet's nest. Um, I, do, I do have to go back to, you know, the ripple effect um, of what you're suggesting, Councilmember Williams, would would not be um, something that would sit well with, with all of the bargaining units. Certainly if the candidate pool for this position um, demonstrates a weaker um, level of experience, then an option that we might have would be to underfill the position um, as an administrative assistant, which is the current position. We would refly it then at that point recognizing that the candidate pool um, isn't as strong as we had hoped it would be. But I, I don't believe that to be the case. Um, I believe that most most times with, with the level of experience and qualifications that this type of position um, that we're looking for, we'll probably come in with some very strong candidates that, that might even have a current salary doing a similar job that would be above the, the first step. So just for my information, supposing um, you're advertising a position at a certain uh, range and there are no, no qualified candidates applying, so what's the uh, protocol then? Do you return to the council and say we can't hire anybody uh, because if you were able to uh, elevate the range, then presumably you'd be able to, to, um, to find some qualified applicants? I think taking it to that level would be kind of the la last resort, um, we would look at what were our outreaches and recruiting processes. Um, you know, right now for these types of positions, we do we do a local recruitment. So we we post it on our webpage. We post it at jobs available. We put it in the paper. We do the out that that kind of an outreach um, for you know the more sophisticated positions. Um, we could go as far as you know hiring a, a recruiting firm to help with that. This position, in my opinion, doesn't warrant that level of expenditure, and you know we'll, we'll see what we get. Thank you. All right, and the public, any questions on this or any comments? All right, close public comment, and I'll bring entertain a motion to pass uh, on item number ten as presented. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Kraus, a second by Vice Mayor Dunsford. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. All right, thank you very much. Moving on, item number 12, rescinding resolution 2017-054 and adopting a resolution reverting 18 parking spaces on the south side of Girard Street to unrestricted parking. Recommended action is consideration to adopt the resolution. Um, I'll take this, Mike. Um, this was a proposed parking plan in 2017 that I actually strongly proposed and advocated. That has not worked out at all. So we're going to uh, bring this back and revert. What this did is on Girard Street, the 18 spaces that are immediately in front of uh, Calistoga Spa Hot Springs to encourage more downtown parking. Uh, we had uh, turned those into three hour maximum spots. And what we found consistently is that those spaces uh, remain vacant for most of the day because uh, a lot of the employees who work in the businesses downtown whose shifts are longer than three hours now can't park there. Um, the reason I pulled this is there was an adjacent business owner who requested that we also remove the three hour parking restriction on the parallel spaces that are immediately in front of West America Bank. Um, and I just wanted to address uh, the give back of 18 spaces with unrestricted um, should be far plenty. Um, and the three, is it three or four spaces? 
six spaces um, in front of on Gerard in front of Bank uh, of West America uh, will remain restricted at three hours. Council members, any questions on this? Anyone in the public? All right. Close public comment. I'll entertain a motion on item number 12. I will actually make the motion as further proof of my failed idea. So I'll second, I'll, I'll second your. Well, I, I don't think it was a failed idea. I think it was. We part, tried it. In, it was in part due to the loss of parking okay. during the Caltrans Agreed. Uh, bridge deal. So oh, we wanted right. to. Do I forgot that part. We Never mind. Then now that the Caltrans it, bridge it, is done, we're was, good. Exactly. It was a good idea. It was a genius time. idea that was, nobody used. It was a good idea at the time. It's no longer. Needed. I will move on item number 12. Second. All right. It's a motion by myself, second by Vice Mayor Dunsford. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, moving on. There's no public hearing this evening, but we'll move on to item number 14, which is the annual review of the Calistoga General Plan. The recommended action is to review and provide direction. Taking us through this item this evening will be Director Goldberg, Planning and Building. Thank Lynn, you, welcome Mayor back. City Council. Thank you. Nice to be back. And thank you for allowing the uh, building permit tech position. Very excited and um, hope to do a first review of the applications on Friday. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Monday. Close this Friday. <laughs> Thank you, Acting City Manager. Uh, as required by state law, a report has been prepared by the planning staff on the implementation of Calistoga's general plan during 2018. Attachments 1 and 2 to your written stock report provide information on, many, on the many general plan actions that were implemented. Uh, some of the highlights include uh, very briefly completing the construction of the Berry Street Bridge replacement project, which included bicycle lanes and wide sidewalks, replacing the phage water tank, which is a critical component of our water storage and distribution system, pursuing a portion, purchase of a portion of the fairgrounds, replacing the Tedeschi Field restrooms, working with a landscape architect to develop a plan for facilities near the Oat Hill Mine Trailhead, updating the city's emergency operation plan, issuing an occupancy permit for the 30-unit Calistoga Senior uh, Affordable Apartments Project, continuing to administer the residential rehab loan program, uh, approving a 78-unit apartment project and purchasing a potential affordable housing site. I'd also like to note that we have now exceeded our total regional housing um, need allocation by 46 units, and we have about three years remaining in that planning cycle. So um, not to say that obviously we have uh, fulfilled all of the housing needs of the city, but um, we have met the uh, state's goal for the city. So very happy about that with another almost three years to go. And also in your written staff report are some of the significant efforts that uh, the staff is working on and the council is working on uh, during 2019, some of which have been already completed. And um, many of these are going to be con contained in your um, preliminary budget that you'll be looking at on Thursday at the budget workshop, so I'm not going to review those. Um, but I'm sure we'll be talking about a lot of the capital improvement programs as part of that review. So um, we need to, oh, uh, this was presented at the Planning Commission at this April 24th meeting, and they recommended its acceptance to the City Council. There, I also wanted to note that the general plan was not amended at all during 2018, although it is a living, breathing document and can be amended up to four times a year. Uh, so um, what the direction we're looking for from you is, um, uh, consider accepting the annual report in the Calistoga Journal Plan and direct staff to file it with the state. We file it with the uh, Office of Planning and Research and also with the Department of Housing and Community Development as required by state law. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Director Goldberg. Council members, any questions? I'd like to compliment um, staff, actually, uh, and previous councils. I hadn't gone through this kind of document before, but um, both the directors of the, of the departments and the uh, staff and previous council is supervising it um, to organize this program. Um, I'm impressed. So I think uh, good job and uh, thank you for carrying on. I have a couple of quick questions. Um, on page seven, I think there's simply a typographical error, I believe. Under the line 
uh, general plan amendments is the bold print and then two lines under there the, the general plan is planned to be updated during 2018 or 2019 I'm sorry. Uh, yes, page, seven. Page okay. Seven. General plan amendments and implementation. Um, we are. I'm, I'm sorry. It should be during 2019. 2019. We've been okay. working on these updates okay. yeah. for a couple That's fine. of years. So Thank just a, you. just yes. a typo there. Yes. Although they are in process, and in fact, there's a draft of one of them prepared. And the economic development um, element, I'm very excited. I'm going to be participating in the um, chambers downtown revitalization. Um, planning strategy meetings, and I'm hoping that will inform an update of the economic development element. And Thank a, you for noting that. Yes, I have a couple of questions. I'm on page 23, which is the housing element action, the top of page 23, just a couple of terms that I'm not familiar with. Mm -hmm. On section 4.1-1, up in the top, there's reference to growth management system allocations, and I don't know what that refers to. Uh, is there information about that online? There's a vast uh, growth management system process ordinance, uh, the resource management system. They're all intertwined. Um, we, uh, when we do need to give out allocations because we only have a limited um, amount of water, wastewater, population growth available. Um, we are supposed to give preference to the construction of housing that will assist one or more special needs groups or affordable um, housing. Um, it's uh, goals that are set by the city council. Some of those things have been suspended because we do have adequate amount of water and wastewater at this time. So there was what I was trying to relate was that no preferential treatment was required because there were sufficient allocations to meet all of the, the residential development demand. Nobody went wanting. Sure, and is it? And just referring to the term itself, are, is there a list of allocations available somewhere that I could see? You will be getting public? in July. You'll be getting the annual report on the growth management system, and you will see exactly which allocations were given out in 2018. Is, um, that, is our previous year's yes. uh, allocations available? Uh, yes, every year um, there there's an annual report. And Typically then, in July last year, it was in April. April of last year? Yes. Thank you. And then um, there are a special needs group. What are special needs groups? Special needs groups are uh, referred to disabled persons, um, either mentally, physically disabled, seniors. Um, veterans. Yeah, thank you, veterans. And so um, there's a list of them somewhere? Uh, that's per state law, but in the housing element, there's a whole section on special needs housing. Thank you. That's all. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Lynn, I realize that we're ahead on our uh, regional uh, numbers. Uh, what did you say, 46? We're 46 over the total, and we've exceeded, over every, the, the, and the we've exceeded every income category. Does that include any of the uh, new apartment houses that have not started construction yet? Oh, those refer to only to units that have actually been added to our housing base. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're starting the construction season, and I haven't seen any activity at either of those locations. Have there been any building permits? No, unfortunately. Nothing submitted yet? No. Or anything? Okay. Those, both of those entitlements are active, though, both the 50-unit Calistoga Vista project and the 78-unit unit, excuse me, thinking out okay. new apartments. And we will do our utmost to keep those entitlements alive. There is quite a struggle and competition for workers, or, and the construction costs have just gone out, out of sight. We are also fairly remote, so it's very hard to um, be competitive and um, get, get contractors at a reasonable rate way out here in Calistoga. So uh, that's what we're hearing anecdotally from developers, and um, we're hoping that uh, things will slow down um, and that there won't be another fire and those workers won't be needed in Santa Rosa. And for those many reasons. are usually good for five years? Or? I would know it's, uh, it's initially a year. I can do a second year, and then uh, they go back to the Planning Commission. But um, if circumstances haven't changed, it's really a routine kind of 
thing to get those re-entitled. Okay. Thank you. Especially since we used um, categorical exemption from CEQA for both of those, so we don't have to redo um, the environmental documentation. And as we know, even though we've uh, you know, we got kudos for being ahead on our regional housing needs assessment numbers, we are nowhere near addressing Absolutely the needs not. that we have. Absolutely. What the nor are, yeah. right. well, nor well, are we, we anywhere sure. near what we are allowed to grow through the general plan and the growth yes. allowance. So we are aggressively pursuing additional housing opportunities. Thank you. Any other council members? Anyone in the public with any questions on this? Not seeing any, I'll close the public comment. Uh, Lynn, thank you to you and your team for your work on this. Um, and at this point, what do you need from us? Just to go ahead and uh, file it? I'll need a motion on that or no? Consensus. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to file the report as presented with the state of California. Second. Oh, you'll be the first. I'm, I'll entertain oh, a motion. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> second. Making it. We have a motion by Councilmember Krause. We have a second by Vice Mayor Dunsford. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. We will adjourn to a special meeting, which will be Thursday, May 9th at 12 p.m. at the Calistoga Fire Station. This is our annual special budget workshop. Um, again, we've already had uh, one session on this for goals and objectives. The public is actively encouraged to participate. This is when we start deciding where we spend your money. So the first meeting will be May 9th at noon at the Calistoga Fire Station. Thank you very much. And as mentioned at the beginning of this meeting tonight, we will adjourn in memory and in honor of Sylvia Marciano. Thank you. Have a good evening.